Welcome inside Tokyo Port Bowl. Stepladder finals of the DHC PBA Japan Invitational. I'm Lucas Wiseman alongside Stu Williams for the call this evening here in Tokyo. We've got a great stepladder coming up. We've got uh, Jacob Buttruff is our top seed. Miyazawa is our second seed. Jason Belmonte third. Dom Barrett is fourth. And Chris Barnes just stuck in to the fifth spot. Stu, you just watched practice for a bit. We've got about 30 seconds here before we do the intros, I think. Uh, any quick thoughts? Yeah, the practice session was actually quite interesting. Um, uh, Jason Belmonte was actually trying to throw backup balls. And uh, there was an interesting interaction between him and Kirk where Kirk actually asked him if he was playing defense or if he was actually considering it. Because if he was going to play defense, Kirk was going to tell him that he had to stop. Really? So I, I found that kind of interesting because I'd never heard that before. But anyway, uh, Jason has uh, decided that he isn't going to do that because um, he can't play up the lane as much as he needs to. Um, and of course, going across yourself, it's very hard to throw it dead straight if you go across yourself. So anyway, he's, he's, uh, he says he wanted us to know that he's going to be starting at least 10 for the left than he's been doing before. All so right, that's, so uh, let's send it down to Kirk Von Kruger, Kruger, Deputy Commissioner of the PBA, where we're going to do introductions. Our five players this evening are the survivors of 28 games of competition. They were both in a step ladder finals this evening. Jacob Butcher from Japan, Miyazawa from It's now my privilege to introduce our five players for today's competition. He has 19 PBA titles, a former PBA player and a rookie of the year. He was a 2003-2004 Japan Cup champion and the 2015 DHC PBA Japan Invitational Champion. A member of our PBA Hall of Fame from Double Oak, Texas, Chris Barnes. They'll be facing a seven-time titleist, including the 2018 U.S. Open. He is your defending champion from Colchester, England, Tom Barrett. has 21 PBA Tour titles, among them a record 11 major championships. He's a past Rookie of the Year and a four-time PBA Player of the Year. From Orange, New South Wales, Australia, please welcome Jason Belmonte. <laughs> Our number one seed only needs to win one game this evening to be crowned the 2019 DHC PBA Japan Invitational Champion. He has six PBA Tour titles. Two of them came this year, including the 2019 USBC Masters from Tempe, Arizona. Put your hands together for Jacob Butra. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. These are your five remaining players for this evening's stepladder competition. I'm going to dismiss the players now. The number four and five seed will receive two more practice shots. And then we will vote for score. Thank you. All right, there's the introductions from Kirk Von Kruger. And uh, as he said, Don Barrett, Chris Barnes are going to get an extra shot of practice here before we get underway.
Big money on the line tonight, 5 million yen to the winner. It's the equivalent of just under 45,000 U.S. dollars. So we'll see the final practice shots here for both these guys. Ladies and gentlemen, by PBA and JPBA and PBA Japan rule, the higher seeded player gets choice of starting lane and order. The number four seed, Don Barrett, has elected to let Chris Barnes begin the match. So Chris will start the match on the left lane. That is that was Dom's decision. And they any significance there? We know that this is 19 and 20. The left lane has potentially been a little tougher from what we've heard. That's what Belma was saying earlier, but I guess it's all relative. Yeah, I think that Dom had a pretty decent look on both lanes, and if you have a pretty decent look on both lanes, then you're obviously going to finish first. That's pretty much the standard operating procedure. Um, I'm actually a little surprised to see him practicing with this. I almost feel like Dom's throwing that ball on those two shots to just almost take a little bit of oil off to the right because um, I think he's going to start with the red ball which is a, um, a Columbia overseas ball called the movement um, it looks like Chris is going to be using this truth tour um, that was the ball that Chris finished with uh, in the position round he made a nice run with that ball so um, yeah it should be it should be kind of interesting these two were both bowling in pretty much the same um, same spot on the lane in the practice. I think Dom will probably end up being a couple left of him. Um, if there was a prize for uh, winning the practice session, Miyazawa would have a 5,000 yen check because <laughs> he had by far the best look, including Jacob. So um, be interesting to see how the lanes develop. I actually need to apologize. That is a... Uh, Badger claw, a honey badger claw it isn't a uh, truth tool. We got a nice look at it there. It's Chris Barnes going to start things off. Chris just barely made it into this stepladder. Had a quite a bit of luck. Everything kind of went his way. Went from eighth to fifth in the position round to even get to this point. It's pretty unusual to be on a stepladder when you're 300 pins behind. Yes. Um, the guy who's you're playing in the first match. Um, that's not a that's not a normal occurrence. Yeah, that's a that's a big that's, gap that's there. That's a big gap, especially when you know that the the scores weren't massive. Yep. Like it's just strange. I didn't even realize it was quite that much until I just saw the uh, the sheet. I kind of looking at it almost thinking it was a typo, but it was on it was it was on the live scorings. Yeah, it was uh, 299 pins from fourth to fifth. Nice, nice shot by Dom. The top four guys, Buttruff, Miyazawa, Belmonte, and Barrett, all kind of pulled away down the stretch. Uh, another interesting tidbit from the practice, Dom was actually considering bowling straight, but the 15 board, which was where he was going to slide, wasn't actually flat. Really? So he felt like when he was sliding every now and again, it felt like his his foot caught on it a little bit. So then he decided that he wasn't going to mess around with having to worry about that. So he was just going to move left and kind of play the lanes differently from when he put that one up. Yep. So a double to start. This is where all the league players at home uh, say in the most awful voice, they all look the same up there. <laughs> I'm sure Chris feels like that right now. been a good crowd all weekend here at Tokyo Port Bowl. Chris Barnes gets the strike in the second frame, trails by 10 pins. So, early on here, this is a PBA title on the line here in Tokyo. Chris Barnes, third frame, snaps out the 10. Very nice adjustment made there. 
Um, I think it was just that first shot on TV is always a bit of like, no matter how many times you've done it, yours feels like anyway that you have a little bit of the jitters and getting getting away with that, getting you know getting those out of the way is always nice. But two really good shots there by Chris. Now last year, Don Barrett took home the trophy. He's gonna have a lot more work to do to get to that point again. He averaged almost the same as he did last year. Last year he was right at 220. This year he was 220.71 for 28 games. Yep. It's mean when the other guys bowl better. <laughs> uh, Dom actually looks like he's just, he's, it feels like he's being forced a little further left than he really wants to be. So he's having to use more, a bit like we were talking earlier on, on uh, camera about how versatile Dom is. It actually looks like right now he's just trying to make it hook a little bit more than he would like in the perfect world. So it'll be interesting to see if he makes an adjustment off that or if he just, you know, his hand just gets more used to it and then he, he can loosen up a little bit. But right now he just looks like he's trying to make the ball do a bit more than it really wants to do. We have seen a fair amount of transition here on this 45-year-old 44-year-old wood pat wood surface and 45-foot dragon pattern. So you get that one out there. A lot that of was, numbers that, there. That was a little tricky. Yeah, I think the thing with it is, is, I think the transition's quick, but then I think after the first transition, it becomes like quite similar for a long time. So it'll be interesting. The first match, I anticipate the scores being quite high. That's how it's been most of the week. And then as the step ladder progresses, I would anticipate the scores going down a little bit. That's where Jacob is going to be. Re really good for Jacob only having to bowl the one game. Jacob Butcherov has really dominated this weekend in qualifying and match play. Barnes. I, I actually think that Jacob's led every single game he has. because he was in the lead game one. That is right. Jacob has, uh, has led from start to finish here. Just a matter of winning the title. We'll be talking more about Jacob Butcherov coming up in probably about an hour or so. That there is the, um, is the shot that Chris is still kind of getting back from that injury a little bit. That's the one that he would never do before, where he kind of like falls out of it a little bit when he's, he's, he's trying to get his hand a little more around it, and he just kind of falls off it a little bit. He almost never saw him do that um, five or six years ago. But, I mean, he's still got such a straight swing that he's able to keep the ball pretty much on line that he wants. That's more like what he would normally do. Oh, he gets away with oh. it. Gets the strike. 22 pin lead for Chris Barnes. And he reminds Dom that that probably wasn't this, what he was trying to do. <laughs> he knew it was going to go high. You see the nice reaction there. Four in a row for Chris Barnes and you're right, Stu, it's shaping up to be a higher scoring opening match, at least so far. Dom Luke. pops a double to cut it back down to 12. Luke is coming out with the four words that I like more, most in life. You're Stu right, Stu. was right. <laughs> words that Tina rarely says. See that Dom's hand looked like it was it was a little softer then. It looks like he's brought his break point in a little bit, trying not to make the ball hook as much. So um, hopefully, from the uh, British point of view, Dom can continue to do that because I think if he if he's able to do that, he's got a really nice look in the bowling center in, in general. So you said this is a ball that that's an international release. Did he yes. drill it here? Yes. Oh, See. Dom through the face. There's the difference. Dom's rev rate's a little higher. He's throwing it a little slower. He has almost the same miss as Chris. Chris managed to get a strike from it, and Dom's still left almost half the pins. It's, uh, it can be a game of fine margins at times. Because basically, they both threw just as bad a shot then. 3, 4, 6, 10 is the leave. And he covers it up. Very nice. He really needed to spare that one to stay kind of somewhat in touch. Um, it would have been pretty. It would have been pretty bad to uh, to have missed that and been basically back to level par. Um, especially with Chris having the full bagger already. Chris left the six ten in the first. 
he's gone light the last couple of times on this lane, so it'd be interesting to see if he makes an adjustment or if he just continues to play the light hit. Barnes buries, buries that one, taking Dead advantage flush. of the break in the last frame. Yeah, right now, Chris isn't being that kind to the English guys on this lane. <laughs> um, he's being kinder to Dom than he was to me, but I played Chris uh, many moons ago, five years ago, I think it was, on this same pair of lanes. And uh, Chris bowled 3 zero, 0 So now he's had the, uh, the one miss against Dom, followed by a five-bagger. So for those counting at home, he's got 17 strikes out of 18 against the English on this pair. Not as quite a, quite as big a prize for a 300 this this year as there was when when he did it. But there is yeah. a prize. He right? basically got twice his prize money. He did there there is there would be a prize if somebody shot 300 on the show today just because yeah. nobody's bowled 300 yet and there's a little prize pool for that. It's got a light. Oh, oh. S slides the four over for another strike. Six in a row for Chris Barnes as he has opened up a 36 pin lead. If he's gonna be carrying those hits, it looks like Dom might as well go home, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris is kind of playing with house money here. Lucky to even be in the finals and yeah. he's taking full advantage of it so far. Well, a couple of strikes here by Dom. Get the game back in, uh, back together for him. Dom basically, if Dom strikes out, he shoots 254. Right now, Chris is in the 240s. Yep. Um, so, Dom kind of knows what he needs to do and just got to hope for a little bit of help. Yeah, at this point. And to be honest, Chris has still got, um, Chris has still got uh, two, f oh no, he's only got the one frame left on the left lane, which is kind of, kind of fortunate for him because he's had Four shots on it already, and he's almost missed three times out of four. Big shot for Dom here. Got a hold. Gets the strike. There we go. Well, that's definitely made it somewhat interesting because Chris, Chris still needs another double. Um, As of now, Chris leads by 26. We've got two and a half frames to go here in our opening match of the Stepladder Finals from Tokyo Port Bowl. Once again, Barnes was in eighth place in the position round match and moved all the way up to fifth. He was actually in eighth. He was in seventh place when he finished the 10th frame. <laughs> That's true. Oh, my. Pocket. 7-9 split. A little high. Ball went right wow. past the nine pin and just so, blows it out. Um, I'm sure Chris will. But right now, this is extremely important for him to make sure he takes one here. That's a, that's a brutal break right there, isn't it? Completely brutal. But, I mean, it was due, let's be honest, after the last two shots on the left lane. He so caught some breaks. Some pretty huge breaks, really, especially the trip in the big four or the, the three out of the big four. So, I mean, it always feels worse when you get the bad break on your side, for sure. But Chris has got to make sure he covers one of these pins. We have seen pins bounce here a little bit. Yes. There we go. It's he, the one. He, the one was so huge then because, of course, if he'd have got none, Dom and him would have been 254 apiece striking out. So we've now got a two-pin match in the way the youngsters add up the scores. I would say 12. Yes, because you're old. <laughs> I guess if you assume strikes... The thing is, is when it's when the scores are very high, I always assume strides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the scores are pretty high right now. But Chris, Chris is probably going to have to make a little move on this lane for sure because the last couple of times he's been pretty high. If so. he strikes here, he can't be shut out. No, exactly. That looks good. Big shot. Gets it done. Very nice. And no matter what, Chris Barnes is going to have a chance in the 10th to win the match. So that shifts all the pressure over to Don Barrett's corner now. But when Dom sat down, he was just hoping that he was going to have a chance. And yep. now he's got a chance. Now Dom's got to perform. Um, Chris, is, Chris, Chris has had a couple of good breaks and one really bad break. And, uh, yeah, so Dom needs to make three good shots here and then sit on the bench and hope. Critical shot here for Dom Barrett. That's got to go. Light hit doesn't carry the 10. Yeah, Dom, Dom Barrett's in some trouble now. Dom just leaked that one a little bit further right than he would have liked. 
It could have struck, but it definitely wasn't his best effort. Spare here. He can still shoot 233. Yep. But yeah. that would just force Barnes to mark. Yes? Yeah. Well, he, he, count. yeah, mark, mark an eight. Count. Yeah. But still. I don't anticipate, if Dom gets the first strike in the 10th frame, I would anticipate him definitely taking his time. Um, he's doing the math right now. Oh, I'm pretty sure he's, he's got the math double glued checking into the his math. head. Yeah. He's making sure he knows the situation. He looked up at the scoreboard. Shot. Another 10 pin. That's the that's the ten eleven. Yes, it is. So that's uh, that's pretty much ended this match, because even if Chris opens, he's going to have to lose. He, it would have to be a big four. Be a, a big four or four great through church. the face or great church, something like that. And so I'm pretty sure that Chris is aware of that situation. Yeah. So he's and the and let's be honest on that lane, the only shot he's had that wasn't nearly a perfect strike was a slightly high. Seven nine. Yeah. So that's right. From from Chris's point of view, that seven nine thankfully hasn't really affected him. Nope. Um, he doesn't get any prizes for beating the guy by <laughs> more than one pin. So um, he'll progress on now. Um, be interesting to see, depending on how Chris's uh, um, transitions are through his balls. You might see him, um, after he closes out the match here with this first shot, you might see him trying a couple of different balls because um, Jason Belmonte two, is the three seed, correct? Yeah, yes. So Jason's mm -hmm. going to come on. He's going to get six shots. So the lanes are going to transition a little bit for sure. So Chris will want to know, you know, if he throws his first shot and he sees it hook a little more, if he needs to change. Like I, I, Nine pins on this shot is a guaranteed winner. Oh, that could have, could have gone through the face and big forward, but he got lucky. Gets the strike, and Chris Barnes is going to move on. So right now I'm pretty sure we're going to see him changing balls. Well, there's, no, there's nothing to be lost here, so he might as well yeah. take a couple of practice shots here, basically. Because what I think we've – no, it looks like he's going to stay with the same ball, and he's just going to probably – no. No, there you go. No, he's changing. Changes into the uh, teal, uh, teal honey badger. Hey Lucas, from your uh, from your video, is this a 15 or a 16? <laughs> I don't remember. No, I think I, I I honestly don't remember. Sounded like a 15. Chris uh, Chris went through a stage when we were I think it was the tournament at Wayne Webb's place. He uh, he had a multiple balls in 15 and 16, and uh, he kept going, Hey Steve, Hey Steve, guess what weight it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, for, for the European viewers, there's a commercial about Hump Day that he was uh, copying. Ah. Um, Another look there. That was seven. a uh, white hot badger. Yeah, and that was a little I quick off. I, I honestly don't know off. how I know that. <laughs> 253, 222 is your final score as Chris Barnes advances into our next match, and he will take on... Jason Belmonte in a big match coming up in just a moment. Belmonte's going to come on and presumably get a few minutes of practice here before we start our next match. Another great showing by Dom, though. They Back-to-back uh, -back years making the show. Yeah, Dom back-to-back-to-back uh, -back -to -back here. Oh, back-to-back-to-back. -back -to -back. There you here. go. Here. I mean, they yeah. went. The, this tournament was held in, in a different uh, center okay. in between. Gotcha. Um, but the three years, the center. last three years in this center, he'd actually been the number one seed both times. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, certainly not a place that he dislikes. Dom finds some centers that he likes, and he just beats them to death. <laughs> the, uh, the, the, uh, the bowling center in Qatar, um, QBC, the Qatari bowling center, he, uh, he had a lot of success in that bowling center. I think he had three wins and two seconds in that bowling center. Wow. So, uh, well, he definitely likes Tokyo Port Bowl, although it was not kind to him in that opening match of the stepladder. So, in uh, I, I, I'm a big sports fan, and um, 
I, uh, they have a debate over who's the best player in the world in basketball a lot. And they talk about the transitions, you know, between like it went to uh, like Moses Malone yeah, and then yeah. it moved on to blah, 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 blah. And now they're talking about it, whether it's changing from LeBron onto Giannis. I would say that the transition in bowling terms, it actually went from Barnes to Belmonte. Um, I think that that was the, almost the step. Like around 2011, yep. um, Chris won the World Championships in 2010, and then the, uh, the Belmonte train pulled into the station yeah. in 2011, and it's been a, a runaway train almost since Chugging then. Chugging along. And, uh, and the, there's been years, you know, where EJ Tackett was player of the year or whatever. I, I, I get that, but I don't think that anybody mm. in those times was disputing that Belmo was the best mm. player. EJ just had the best results that season. You, you, you know what I mean? Yep. Like, LeBron doesn't win player of the year. Every, you know, he doesn't win the MVP every year, but he was the best player in the league pretty yeah. much universally. And I feel like, um, yeah, the, the mantle was passed. So just setting it up, really, to me, these were the... Sort of a generational battle here. Yeah. Like, I would say that Chris had that title for a while. I think he took it somewhat off Walter Ray. Um, and okay. then... Uh, so who's, who's next after Belmonte, then, to be determined? Um, well, I mean, it may well be Jacob. Jacob could be Anthony Simonson? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Uh, Simonson seems to be a very popular choice. He's very young. Um, he's having a lot of success. Um, Anthony isn't quite as prolific a winner as the other guys are. He gets there a lot, but he... But he's he only 22. No, no, 100%. I, yeah. it would be interesting to watch that, though. Because I mean, it, it, I do find it very interesting, though, that people are very quick to tell me all the time how young Anthony Simonson is, <laughs> but nobody seems to remind me how young Jesper is. Yeah. Jesper doesn't seem to get that qualifier. That's true. People just go, oh, he can only bowl with urethane. And then I kind of... I, I find it very strange that people don't give him the qualifier that he had seven titles at 23 so if you're wondering who these people are you're seeing on the screen it's not us that's it's the japanese, japanese version us. of us <laughs> they're the uh, pba japan commentators and uh, they're sitting right in front of us as you probably noticed as we are calling the action in our native languages so belmo is uh, looking like he might be given the high road pull a uh, a go you see tim mack back there Ball wrapping for Storm this week. I don't know whether it is or not, but it's laid out the same, so I'm going with the fact that it is. That's the high road pull that Belma won the World Championships He's with. He loves that ball. He, he, he used, uh, uses he didn't, that. I, he actually quickly. hadn't used it for quite a while until the World Championships. And uh, uh, I'm not necessarily going to take credit for it, but I was asking for a 16-pound one, and Jim brought them back onto the truck. They hadn't been on the truck for a while. Uh, about about three weeks before that and then when they went over to the arena bay that's when Callahan was said to to Belmo I really think this ball will be good and Jason drills a lot of balls and, uh, it sounds like Belmonte is elected to start on the left lane and I think that's because he doesn't like he the left hates lane, lane so he definitely wanted to finish on the right lane I don't think that's any surprise do you, do you not love the... Oh, I love the, that. The, the, <laughs> yeah. It's like we're at a professional wrestling match. <laughs> um, I have, honestly, in all my time of knowing Belmo, I have never heard him so negative about a situation than bowling on this pair. It, it, incredible. Like You have to avoid that getting in your head a little bit, I would think. It starts yeah, off it, with a strike on the lane he hates, but it, so... But it's so unusual Yeah. for Jason. He's just... A lot of us are like that. I've just never heard him like that before. It was, it was, it was very interesting. He tends to have a very positive mindset and a, and a very strong mental game. Well, even when he, in general. even when he doesn't, he doesn't let everybody else know. Right. That, but he was, yeah, he was, um, he was very disappointed about it being on this pair of lanes for the final. Well, the challenges get harder and harder for Chris Barnes as he moves up the ladder, and oh, the seven pin slid back and is hanging. Almost half off the lane. That's kind of incredible. Wow. Watch the seven pin. Keep your eyes trained on the seven. Watch it. Oh, slid back. Just a little bit. Not enough. It's it's. He could almost breathe on it. It's a quarter of the way off the lane back yeah. there. Wow. Maybe if we could show Chris that replay, he'd feel better about it. <laughs> I don't think so. 
so. <laughs> Makes the spare, but doesn't mean he's happy with with that result. That was strange. We have seen a lot of that here in this bowling center this week. Pins yeah. sliding on the deck. But Chris that was a different two, kind. Chris's two hits on that lane have both been very similar, where the pins really haven't moved. Yeah, it's almost like the pins have just dodged the other pins. Like, <laughs> no, we're not going. Yeah, that was an unusual hit for sure. Now Barnes trying to get get it going here on this left lane. It gets it that time. It's a lot harder to tell because we can only watch the TV, the the, the, the monitor. Mm -hmm. But it looks like the change that Chris has made is he's just slightly upped his ball speed rather than trying to chase. Because he started looking like he was trying to chase it in. And I don't think he, I think he's decided that was a bad idea from throwing the couple of practice shots he had, at, you know, at the end of the game with Dom. And he's um, he just looks like he's put his ball speed up a little bit. There's Belmo. He's had a great season on the PBA Tour. And looking to make it even better here today. He starts with a double, has a 10-pin lead. Talk a lot about PBA Player of the Year and what that situation is. And Belmo, the front runner for that award, if he wins today, that just one eight hundred over <laughs> makes makes it even tougher for anybody else to get there, if at all. Somebody would have to win quite a few titles the rest yeah. of the year. I, already I mean, has two majors. I mean, the vote is already is often skewed by what happens towards the end of the season, though. That is true. Like, I firmly believe that if Jacob would have won the U.S. Open last year, that he would have ended up winning Player of the Year. Yeah, it would have um, definitely changed the conversation. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, just, and that's whether Andrew had the better season or not. Yeah. I actually told, uh, I was talking with Frankie about this, and I told him that Andrew really did us all a bad, a bad thing for everybody by winning Player of the Year. Because I said, look, last time somebody took Player of the Year off Belmo, he came the next year and won three majors. <laughs> just let him have Player of the Year. Like, it's irrelevant. Just let, let him take it, and then at least he'll let us have a chance in the other tournaments. <laughs> well, that's kind of what's happened, I guess. Oh, no. Oh, God. The carry for Barnes on this right lane has been has interesting. Been interesting, and he would probably describe it as atrocious at times. He's left a pocket 7-9. He's left a 7-pin that sl almost slid off the back of the lane, and now, now a 9-pin. Yeah, he's he, he, it's strange because the first couple of sh the first two or three shots on that lane he was going very light and then the ball started coming up really flush now. I feel like he would like to be able to get that ball to get, you know, a bit a bit more in the swish zone again. Cuz that seems to have carried pretty well here that hit, that particular hit. Well, Chris is Got to find a way to strike on that right lane. Otherwise, he's going to be in big trouble. Belmo's looking really tough early on here in this second match of our stepladder finals in Tokyo. The left lane has been pretty good for him. <laughs> Not that time. He got, he, he, um, it looked like the ball made the transition just a little bit too far down the lane then. And um, that ring 10 hit has been quite prevalent when you've been bowling those tighter, ang tight, tighter straighter lines this week. But like we saw in the last match, one, one frame can really flip the match. Like you think it's going one complete way and then suddenly it's different. Looks like he's stuck a little bit there. Hopefully he didn't hurt a hip. Trails by 21 pins at this stage. Yeah, Chris would say that if if you were evaluating Chris's start to the game, you'd say he'd thrown th three and a half near perfect shots. I mean, the four the fourth wasn't was probably a 75 percent, whereas the others have been re really good shots. So. Well, Belmo looking to put his foot on the accelerator here. And the 10-pin 
We almost kind of had that change, like like we were talking about with the seven ten there. <laughs> very strange. Almost got this one very far right though. Yep. I mean, that's almost the furthest right. Seven goes seen. late. Ten gets tapped, and uh, leaves just the ten pin standing. And that ends his run of three strikes in a row. Still a twenty pin lead for Jason Belmonte as we are. Four frames in, and Dom Barrett's already got a beer. Double fisting, even. <laughs> uh, did he have two? I think he. I think he had one for a friend. Let's hope. <laughs> well, I don't know why you care, because you, you'll be gone. I'll be the one. Having that is to true. Like, You're going to have to carry him back to the hotel room. He, he, I actually, I my my days of carrying Dom have gone. <laughs> now now he's a father. He's much more more mature that than he true, was. That is true. Yeah. Many moons ago. It is kind of interesting in between the break, me and him were talking about, you know, our kids crawling and stuff and it kind of come full circle. Belmo leaves the 10 pin. So now his carry has gone away momentarily. And just like that, Barnes still in this match. Yes. Yes, he is. It just the only thing with Chris, though, is is like when you make a shot and you, and you do something wrong, it's much easier to make a change. Like when you throw two shots like he's thrown before, it makes it very hard to make a change off it because it just feels like you're forcing a change when you don't really need a change. But if you don't do anything, and then he nine he has another high single pin again, it's going to drive him crazy. Yeah. So these are sometimes the hardest changes to make. It looks like Chris is uh, wow. After he's st after he's stuck he's on that I guess spare, he's testing he's the just, approach yeah. in the corner. But. After that last uh, shot where he. Felt like he stuck a little bit, it looked like. He's going to just check it and try to figure it out here on this right lane, which has got him a little befuddled so far. Has to find a way to start putting strikes on the board. Messenger, Great. that's one way to carry. Great shot. Chris is looking around. <laughs> I have I have to be honest, these three guys who've bowled so far are, are, are three of my favorite guys on the PBA tour. I, I, I really enjoy the company of all three of them. Like, they're very... For, for, we've all got similar senses of humor, um, especially Chris. Yeah. Um, me, me and Chris have a lot of uh, good, good times. <laughs> I can imagine. The sarcasm and jabs that go back and forth there. Yeah, we've <laughs> we've kind of backed off from each other because we feel like there's no point in two alphas going at it. Like <laughs> there's 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 people further down the food chain who we can pick a, pick on. It's much easier. All right, Byron's looking for his first double, a chance to cut it to nine, and something caught him. Or his thumb didn't come out of the ball. Oh, we've got a replay. Look at this, a replay. A ball, of the ball. play. It's a ball <laughs> play. It looked like a horse coming out of the uh, thing when they. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Jacob's always really funny when he tries to stop because he almost has to take 19 steps to slow down because he's going so quick when he goes. Chance to cut it to nine with a strike. So quiet in here. Got to go. Gets oh, the light gets hit the to carry. Like for we the were double. talking about, he wanted to get back into that swish zone. Yep. I. It's been a while since I felt like I had the control to play that reaction. I'm terrified that <laughs> I'm going to two eight ten every time I play that uh, hit. But Chris is uh, Chris has been using that hit a lot here um, this week. Just like that, it's a. It's down to single digits. Belmo only up by nine. That was a bad shot. And he leaves a seven pin. Chris takes the lead. Depends on how you add the score. <laughs> if Chris strikes on his next shot, he will have the lead. That is an accurate statement. But three strikes in a row to start the game for Belmo. Now three single pin leaves, two 10 pins and a seven. Leads by eight. 
Four frames to go here in our second match of the stepladder. This situation here is one of the things that Belmo's extremely good at. Like when he sees his ball, it's not quite shaping the way he wants it to. He's got such fantastic control of his speed that it, or, 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 or his uh, rotation direction, so to speak, that he can just make the smallest of changes and, and make those like single pins disappear. Because most of the time when the, he's leaving those hits, it's because his ball's going too far down the lane before it gets around the corner. So he'll probably just, you know, he'll make just the smallest of changes. And it, it's very difficult to appreciate when you're watching on TV. It's much easier in the ball center when you can watch. Takes but. a re-rack there in the seventh. And a 10 pin. Three out of the four previous frames have been 10 pins. And the lead continues to shrink pin by pin. Being this, I've never bowled two-handed. It makes it a little harder. But I would say that he's almost being too nice to it right now. I, I, I think, looking at it, and like I say, this is me being the armchair quarterback, so to speak. Sure, that's what you're here for. I feel like he's, he's got to hit a little harder than he's doing. He needs to give it the business a little bit. I think so. Be a little more. He's talking about being slower. Yeah. I, just, I just think he needs to just make it hook earlier rather than slow down. I just feel like when he's going slower, it, 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 it's still skidding just as much almost. Yeah. But we have seen a lot of people this week have problems getting the ball to finish. Belma's not really been one of them, but he, it has He has had a few times where it's – and the thing is, is on wood, you've got to make so many different changes, and Belma's such a field player and so natural with it that, like, his, you know, his instincts kick in more than – Chance for the lead here for Barnes, and he gets it. Good shot. Chris Barnes up by three now with three strikes in a row to close out the seventh frame. I think Chris was thinking that one was going a little high, but he put a nice touch on it. I, I like that shot off his hand, but like I say, just got the four pin out. First lead of the game for Chris Barnes. But going back to the Belmo thing. And he takes a re-rack, by the way. I would say whatever choice Belmont makes is probably the correct one. It's <laughs> hard to he question has, him, right? He has way more data about <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> what, correct. what to do than, than uh, the rest of us do. Well, eighth frame. Barnes strikes again. He'll go up by 13. And then... He will have a chance when he steps up next time, ninth and 10th, to, sh to shut Belmo out no matter what. Yes, yes he will. So this is a big shot in this match. Barnes looking for four in a row and a 13 pin advantage. Doesn't oh, like it. Like Three, six, oh, 10. Oh, and he gives up the count as well. Ooh. Eight there was so much better for Chris than seven. So we've got a level match right now if Chris sweeps away the uh, three, six, 10. Yep, both players 136 in the sixth. Oh, ho, ho. almost missed it, but gets the cover. Just a little left of what he would he normally did miss do. It. <laughs> he basically missed it, but got but got lucky, right? Yeah. I think after his seven pin and nine pin early on in the game, he probably deserved to get a bit of a break there. Well, now see, Belmo strikes out, he wins. Yeah, let's see what his change is. Eighth frame for Belmo. Just slower. Ooh, gets it done. Oh, and he just got the nine pin out there. It 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 happened. He that got it. That one really hooked. Watch this. Oh, he mm. three into the it's nine. actually a three pin. Took out the nine. I pin, love right? that hit. That that was one of my <laughs> favorites when I when I do the slow wheel. I like that one. Jason he obviously takes another gets re -rack. it a lot more than I do, but I I like that hit. Lots of re racks on this left lane. I wonder if the rack is is giving him some trouble or it's three re racks in a row on the left lane between the two players. Yeah, no doubt, and maybe some of it's just to do with like that lane's more mentally taxing. Yeah, it could be. So they just want to take a little bit more time. Well, Belmo's now taking two re-racks, so he should be out. 
right? Yeah, but he's already got the 10th frame to bowl. And he won't have to bowl on this left lane again after mm -hmm. this one. So, Strike here. Belmo takes a 10-pin lead and cannot be shut out in the 10th. Gets it. Big That's double for Belmo. Goes up by 10. That's one of Belmo's ones where he, he gets a little short with his follow-through. He does that to make the ball... Um, to, to make it pick up a little bit more. If, 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 you, if we could have seen that shot again, he, he, he kind of cuts across the ball. He almost, he, he, he just doesn't fo get follow through it as much. He does, he's actually done that quite a few times in uh, Columbus when he's bowling on that show on the longer pattern. He just kind of cuts across it. So Barnes has some work to do here. He can shoot 236 if he strikes out ninth and 10th. Belmo can shoot 246, so he can put a lot of pressure on Belmo, but it needs to start right here. Looks good. Gets the 10 out. Big strike for Barnes, sets him up for the 10th. Three strikes here, he'll force Belmo to double. I'm thinking this is set up for a roll off sponsored by Jeff Goodger. <laughs> they do have the possibility of a tie. Are we going to have a 4-3 rack in a row? Yes, we are. <laughs> Let's go. Re rack, re rack. Well, he'll be, he's out now, so he won't be able to take another one. So are we thinking a 235 tie or a 225 tie? I would say that 225 is most likely. Okay. But it's hard to say. Yeah, obviously. I could, if, if you could predict into the future, I'd ask you for some lottery numbers. Well, this is a big, big shot here for Barnes. If he doesn't strike here, he has virtually no chance to win the match. It'd be tough. Mm -hmm. I think he's throwing a good one here. Needs it. Gets it. Double for Barnes. I think that was the straight definition of a good one then. That yep. was high flush, 10 in the pit. And we are even. Chris is enjoying this. He's, he's got that smirk on his face that he likes. You, you, you always know when Chris is, he's got the bit between his teeth and he's. Well, I think he, he probably feels like he's, like I said earlier, playing with house money and you know lucky to be here and make it past the match play earlier no i just but he I, made great shots down the stretch in the position I, round i feel and like he feels comfy jump. here as well and, he, and he's he starting does. to feel much healthier he does seem and to like this place and he's just and he's it, it's it's nice when you feel like you've got something you'd like to do when you need to perform so let's see if he can throw another good one it's gotta go goes through the face big four and that's probably going to eliminate the possibility of a tie here and he'll get two of these and shoot 220. Belmo will have just a little work to do. He'll need a mark. Yeah, that was a little disappointing for Chris. I uh, looked like he just got a little slow on it, and it just the ball the ball just picked up so quickly. And this is the one guy you don't really want to be, you know gifting a bit of a chance to. You wanted to really make him earn it. So let's see what Jason's got here. Definitely just waiting, making sure his heart rate's what he wants it to be. Needs a mark. And count. He really needs one good shot, doesn't he? You get nine, you're pretty much cushy. Yep. Strike locks it up. Gets the strike, and Jason Belmonte advances to the semifinal against Chris Barnes. Here's a look at the replay. It was perfect. I think it's an underrated rivalry, Belmont and Barnes. They both really like beating each other. Like, it's a great matchup. Yeah, and I, I think that whole... New school and old school kind of... Best player in the world moving you know, across, I think it, it definitely has something to do with it. Chris is going to be disappointed, but it was another good show in this week, fourth place. 
Belmo buries another strike. Going to be in the 240s. He's going to take on the, the youngster from Japan, Takuya Miyazawa, in the step in the semifinal. Coming up next, winner of that match will bowl Jacob Buttriff for the title. Belmo on a expedition there to see if he can find better ball reaction. Doesn't look like he does. Gets nine on the fill for 245. I think over the uh, over the last few years, I think there's become a lot of uh, a lot of mutual respect between the players, especially from Barnes' side. I think he's really become to uh, appreciate Jason's skills. And I and think if you actually look at the two players, I I actually think they do a lot. It's going to sound ridiculous, but I I think they do a lot of the same things. Like both of them do a lot of things with their hand and with their speed. Both of them can play a lot of different parts of the lane. And both of them are like extremely accurate. And I don't think either player over time has really got the credit they deserve for being super accurate. Like when Chris was bowling and was like the best player or one of the best players in the world, people would always talk about how accurate Walter Ray was or how accurate Norm Duke was. Whereas they weren't really saying that Chris was. <laughs> and it's very difficult to be the best player in the world without being extremely yeah. accurate. I mean, I think one of the times that blew my mind was we were about Jason. We bowled in uh, Maine on the Blue Oil. And we were messing around on a practice session. And uh, I threw one shot. And I said, all right, Belma, follow that line. And I couldn't have thrown the shot twice. Like, <laughs> I just walked up and, like, really threw a ridiculous angle. And Belma stood there for a like, and he went, okay, and he stood there, and he stood there. And this angle was probably, like, 25 to about 4 at, like, 36 feet type of deal. It was really mm. weird shot. And Belma went up, and then he painted the line. <laughs> and I was just, and I looked at Chris at the time, and I said to him, I said, well, you can't do that. <laughs> and Chris, and I think that, I think that was one of the times where Chris was just watching it, and he was like, Wow, that's incredible. You know, to be able to, it's very difficult to change the shape that you bowl. And then Belmont just painted a line of somebody who was just messing around, really. It was, it, was, it was kind of incredible to watch. And then, yeah. So many skills. Yes, very much so. Sometimes hard to appreciate watching on, on flow bowling or on TV. Yeah, and that's why I think that the Fox coverage has been so good. Like, I, I remember when I actually bowled the, the, first, the first stop in uh, December that was on Fox when we were in uh, the Kegel Training Center and they had the lines down the lane and that was really cool. You know, the live where it was showing it as your ball went down the lane. That was that was very cool. Because I think that the blue oil, sometimes for the, for the viewer at home, it's very hard to explain to them that not really deep blue doesn't mean there's no oil there. Right. So it just means that there's a lower concentration of oil. So that's been a little, sometimes that's a little hard to communicate. It looks like Dom has taken over as the uh, as the uh, Columbia tour rep here. <laughs> he's gonna ball rep for Jacob? Yeah, he's like, hey mate, let me put a bit more surface on your ball. <laughs> I think it's more just to, just giving Jacob's a guy to talk to, right? Just to bounce some ideas off of. And I think Jacob said, hey oh, Barrett, make this duller and go and get me a Mountain Dew. <laughs> and Dom told him, we're not in America anymore, mate. I'll get you a Coke. <laughs> Jacob was drinking <laughs> Coke all week. I said, is, 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 is that against your contract? <laughs> it's Mountain Dew sponsorship. Oh, yeah. It is his birthday, so Jacob can do pretty much whatever he wants today. It's Jacob's world. He can always do whatever That's he wants. That's true. And he does. Again, <laughs> this, this is not us, by the way. We're in the background. Hey, everybody. <laughs> We're back here. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> I did. I did have to uh, laugh a little bit yesterday. We were we, we were eating lunch, and Balmo was giving uh, Jacob a little bit of a hard time eating lunch. And uh, a lot of people, like Belmo does this because he wants people to you know rise to it or snap at him. And Jacob's going, C "Can I just not eat my lunch in peace?" <laughs> <laughs> and we started laughing because like Jacob never has a bad word for anybody. So then Bill O'Neill <laughs> says to him. 
So, Jacob, you know those earrings? Are they the $7 type or the $7,000 type? <laughs> That's great. And Jacob goes, I'll buy the $7,000 ones if you want. <laughs> Funny. A lot of funny stuff goes on behind the scenes at these <laughs> tournaments. But yeah. And this is the great thing about flow bowling. We don't have commercial breaks, so we can tell stories during the break between matches and yeah. have some fun. Yeah, you just gotta we, we just we just have to have the uh, the right the right mix in the commentary booth, don't we, Lucas? That's correct. The Stu and Lucas show. You got top billing, by the way. Mention your oh, thanks. But we we forgot Jeff with one F. <laughs> He's doing a great job providing some awesome replays and making sure everything works, which is a much tougher job than it seems. I think his toughest job is when he has to pack up everything by himself. That is true. It is a tough job. And being as you've done it before, you understand <laughs> how much of a tough job it is. Uh, so I thought, you know, you might you know, dig in a little bit for him. I know how Jeff is, and I think Jeff would prefer that I stay out of his way because I would only make it slower for him. Well, can I not just cut my show in peace? <laughs> uh, that's Jeff telling us to move on. And we will shortly here. We've got some nice elevator music playing in the background. And we can just about see the edges of Kyle Troop's fro. On the, uh, on the shot, on the poster at the back. So we don't know too much about Takuya Miyazawa. At least I don't. Do you know much about uh, him? Timmy tells me he's uh, a national team player. Okay. Um, Obviously the, the great hope for Japan in this event. The only player who made it into the finals. Has elected to let Jason start the so Belmo's continuing with the high road pull. And I think uh, that Miyazawa is going to be using, there was the music again. Uh, Miyazawa is going to be using the uh, overseas idol, the uh, bright green one. Well, once again, Belmo going to start on the left lane, but it was not his choosing this time. Oh, almost a 7-10 to start things off. Leaves the 10-pin. So Belmo hasn't missed pretty much flush the entire match. He's just the entire been right in the, the pocket. Ladder. He's yeah. been controlling the pocket really well. He left in the uh, match against Barnes. Left three ten pins and a seven pin basically. Yeah, that, and that, the fill ball doesn't, strange really, seven doesn't pin, matter. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see what the nerves are like here for Miyazawa. It will also be interesting for me to see how whether Belmo playing the lanes quite so far left is actually effective him or whether Bel he's just you know, Belmo's almost jumped over where he was because like when he was practicing, he wasn't really that close to Jason, so it would be interesting to see. Yeah, see, there you go. That's looks right. Back. Two, four, eight, ten to start. You could tell that wasn't going to strike. Really, well, I really could. quickly. He looks almost confused <laughs> by it, and I'm just like. Yeah, we haven't seen many balls that, strike. That would have taken a miracle to come back from there. I don't know. It's very easy to. Uh, to look at other people's shots and rate them. Absolutely. Much, <laughs> you're, you're much more protective of your own bad shots than you are of other people's. <laughs> <laughs> see if he gives us a run here. No. It's hard to make that split this week with the pattern yeah, being 45 well, feet. It's, I think and it's it doesn't a, hook much in the back. I was about to say, I think it's actually the wood because the ball burns yeah. up so much that then it doesn't really get across there. It's one of those that you can get. You either take three by hitting the center of the yep. two pin, or you take three by hitting the left edge of the four <laughs> pin and hitting the yeah. eight into the ten. Well, immediately, Miyazawa trails by 12. Just underway, semifinal here in Tokyo, and he does it again. Two, four, eight, ten for the second consecutive frame that was a much better shot as well it was closer that that i i'm actually really surprised that one didn't come back i feel like 
Belma must have been pushing some of the oil a little. But Belma's line has pushed the oil a little bit further. It's going to change balls this time. Yeah. And same result. Same result. Gets the 2 4. It's almost as hard as the 2 2 8 10, except <coughs> now you get punished by only getting 8 rather than with the 2 8 10, you just take your 2 and move on. It's already a tough feat for Miyazawa to take on Jason Belmonte. But he just spotted him two frames, basically. Yeah. That just makes things much tougher. You don't especially want to give Belmo two frames a handicap. Especially if Belmo gets the double here. Yeah. Because it doesn't, you know, the left lane, maybe Belmo's going to struggle a little bit on, but he seems to have been controlling this right lane really nicely. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. The seven pin needed a couple of taps to go down there. Yeah. That is a strike for Belmo. Chance for him to put a double on the board and open up a 32-pin lead. So early. Um, this is the chance for it to be Belmo versus Jacob Part 2 this year. Has there been any other occurrences of when those two have played each other? It doesn't seem like those two really make the uh, uh, step ladders together that often. It seems it's more a case of one or the yeah, other. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, I, I can't recall. I mean, I, I should probably ring my mother-in-law, Emily, because she watches every PBA broadcast. <laughs> we need Dave Schroeder's TV notes to be able to look that up. Dave Schroeder is the master of all information. Belmo looking for a double. Oh, oh. the 10-pin falls late. Just enough. 34-pin lead for Jason Belmonte. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hasten to add that if Miyazawa doesn't strike one or both of these shots. He's changing balls. Well, I mean. You have to. Yeah. Back this match is in fast forward now. It is. Back to back. Four and this is the, that's the transition he made in the week when he was bowling. But let's see what that does. There Better, you. but a 10 pin. Yeah, he's just really suffering now from the oil down the lane. Jason making it. J Jason, once he gets comfortable and he bowls left, it, it's it's very difficult for the other players. You kind of you've kind of got to bring your break point in more to where his break point is. And I feel like right now, Miyazawa's break point is actually further right than Jason's, and that makes it very difficult. Yeah, that's a that's a bad place to be. Kyle's hair is enormous in that picture <laughs> at, the, at the end of the lane because he's trimmed it back a little bit and yeah. Well, things are looking difficult for Miyazawa. He's basically got to climb Mount Fuji here if he wants to win this match. He's got to find a way to get strikes. I like it. Use the geographical reference. Change it up. I like it. There we go. And he gets the six to tap the ten, gets the strike, and he's on the board finally with a strike here in the semifinal. What a turnaround it would be if he peels off a nine-bagger. That or, would be or interesting. an eight-bagger eight eight to finish the game. Right. Takes the age well. Well, Belmo, you might expect May... Put his foot on the accelerator here and try to put this match far, far to be away. Fair, Jason's last two shots only just struck, so we'll see. That was almost. That was almost. Four ten. Like I say, it's just, it's just a little bit behind it. See, he got that one. He leaked that one a little right at the break point. And on a synthetic lane, that might he might have got away with that, or like it picking up. But on the wood, once you start to get it. You know, because there's like more grooved and less grooved, like the the lineage and stuff. Well, we we did see throughout the weekend that we saw a lot of highs and a lot of lows. It seemed to go up pretty quick and come down pretty quick. And do you think, Stu, that we could be potentially heading toward a low here where the, it, they get more difficult uh, as they transition yeah, a little bit? Yeah, but I, I still feel that belmo has got a pretty good control over what he's doing. Um and part of the reason, once the oil gets down the lane, it becomes tricky. But it's because everybody's playing a different 
part of the lane. So once you start moving, like, that's why sometimes when you're on the stat ladder and you play three games in a row, it's way easier than if you, there's three games of lineage and then you come on type yeah. of deal. Oh, Belmo, Belmo buries a strike there. Strikes again on that left lane. But he kept his break point in much more on that shot than he was doing on the previous shot. So I think that's going to be the key for Jason. It's whether he can find a way to keep his break point close enough to the head pin that he's not going to get those really behind it hits um, going forward. Same thing for Miyazawa. He's got to keep the ball a little closer to the head pin and not leak it so far right. He's got to find that's a way better. to get a double here. Nah, See, it's tie. That's... That's 100% in <laughs> – that just sums up why it's so difficult playing on the TV show with Jason because he just – he kept it close to the head pin, but because he wasn't going from as far left as Jason's going, the ball cuts high, but he's kind of stuck because if he gets it more than a couple right of that, that's not going to spare it. He uh, – if, if he gets it a little bit further right than that, then he's going to 2 8 10. Yeah. He's, he's really in jail with how it is. It is I actually thought that one had a chance then, and it just, it just really tore off the, the back of the pattern. Three opens for Miyazawa. Trails by 49 pins halfway yeah. through, and this match is... If this was a golf match, they'd be yeah. walking to the 19th hole. This is uh, not going well for the, the young Japanese player. There's a better shot. It's a shame that we've seen this pair of lanes uh, bring out the, the, the worst in uh, two of the Japanese players back-to-back -back games that we've seen them bowl here because they both had mm. really good weeks. And they, they were saying that um, the, the gentleman who missed the cut in that last game. Sasaki. Yeah, he'd been in the number for 27 games. Yeah, he was he was right there. Yeah, the whole time. And then he dropped out the last game. He was in the top five for 27 games. Belmo doubles. 59-pin lead. Adam. He's on his way to a uh, huge, the Titans. huge battle with Jacob yeah. Butterf that will potentially have player of the year implications. It will have player of the year implications. And if Jacob wins, <laughs> he will achieve his goal that he stated on flow, <laughs> which at the time seemed absolutely ludicrous. What's your goal for this season? To win three titles. And the then man he will is have confident. Done. Yeah, he will have done before May. Yeah, with still quite a few titles yeah, on the line quite a this lot. year. Oh, 7-10. Nope. Strike. Oh, hang on. Cut away oh, from it, but it robbed. didn't strike. Racks are slow here, so we do see a lot of yeah. late pinfall. Jason was really starting to uh, to uh, to light that one. He, he started doing the little little hop skip when he when he threw that one. He was getting ready to give that the big fist pump. Fifty-eight pin lead for Jason Belmonte, with four and a half, th sorry, three and a half frames to go. Takuya Miyazawa has a chance now for a double. He hasn't done that yet. Come on! Hey, there he gets we go. the double. There you go. On the board. It's never nice to see guys, you know, struggling at this point, but the uh, eleven or twelve thousand dollars is probably going to make things a little better. Nice, uh, nice little payday. Third place. Mm -hmm. Winner gets almost forty-five thousand dollars. For five. Million. Yes. I love all the zeros on the check. We're going to see that later. Three in a row. You bet. Those three splits. He says, not done yet, Belmo. <laughs> not done yet. 
I tell you what, if Belmont's 710, he'd need a double now. That is true. I understand ifs and buts, but still. Yep. Well, it's a 38 pin lead for, for Belmonte now. I think Belmo would very much like to get a double here in the 8th and ninth, and not have to mess around with a 10th frame of a weird hit. Especially with this right lane, there's been some very odd, um, odd leaves on that lane. Holy <laughs> jeez. Been flirting with these 710s a little bit all day long. You do feel like at some point a 710 is going to... Uh, Really derail Jason's day, don't you? Sure seems like it has the potential to rear its ugly head at some point. I mean, we wouldn't even be talking about Player of the Year if it hadn't been for a couple of 710s in, um, in Columbus. That's true. I mean, I, I mean, I don't want to be disrespectful to Jacob's year, but winning three majors would have been pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's game like, over. Yeah. Game over, no matter it's, what. It's cute you want to talk about Player of the Year, but yeah. let's be real. Well... Even if Miyazawa strikes out, he can only shoot 210. Belmo just saying. needs to stay clean. Yeah. But a 710. Yeah, that's right. Pretty difficult to spare. It would be. Let's see what happens. Strike here just about locks it up. Yeah. The messenger doesn't even need to hit it. It was going before the messenger got there, and it's a double for Belmo. That gives him a little. That, that, that gives him a little bit of uh, thinking time for the tenth frame. I don't think he's going to change ball, but I think he's going to definitely look at doing something different for the right lane. With it being, you know, it's hardly like his strikes have been convincing. You know, they've been good shots, but they haven't been really like knocking ten back, have they? It's been like yeah. eight back and two across, yeah. so to speak. Another strike. Well, at least I'll go home with a good feeling of getting some strikes on the board instead of. It's actually amazing. Like if you if you if you look at this game, when you look at the uh, scores, you know when it's printed tonight, it's going to look like it was a close game. Well, not necessarily a close game, but it's not going to look like the it'll game be respectable. It was. Well, I mean, if he strikes out and and, and Belmo splits in the tenth sure. frame, it's going to be two ten to two fourteen or something. Yeah. But it couldn't have been a further gap no. almost. It's, it's this kind this of match was really never in doubt. Oh, 10 pin. But a great showing here. Yeah, very Takura. nice week. Miyazawa. Third place. Third place is a really good finish against a really tough all star field. And just one more match to go. And it's going to be a good one. Superman versus Spider-Man. <laughs> Maybe Godzilla versus Mothra. I don't know who Mothra is. Oh, well. Then. <laughs> Trying to go for a Japanese reference. I don't know if it was a good one or not. And I don't know who would be who who would be who in that in that scenario. One eighty nine. <laughs> Palmer's basically the apex predator. Let's yeah, be honest. That is, he's the T Rex. <laughs> uh, he's top of the food chain. So now he'll just kind of yeah. He's actually, see what he, he is actually find. changing ball. He's going to a regular high road from the high road pearl. Already got the match locked up. Might as well get a few practice shots in. And almost the seven ten there, but. I think he's kind of amazed that it did that. I think he, if he had his druthers, he'd like to see the ball go through the pins a little better and, and carry a little cleaner than he has. Yeah, he's not going to complain about the hits he's carried, but. I don't think Butters is going to be too worried about how his ball's been going through the no, pins. No, Jacob's going to strike. It's been a loud crack most of the week. Yeah. The only thing that's going to maybe I, stop Buttruff is Buttruff. I was about to say especially. Yeah, Yeah, he's been a little suspect there. Timmy's trying to get him to try a different ball. Belmont didn't like the sound of whatever he chose. So yeah, it didn't go through the pins too I well either. I think he's going to try it again. But I think that Timmy wanted him to try a completely different ball, and 
Belmar shook that off pretty quickly, I think, by the looks of it. Well, it's going to be 227, 189, but it felt like more of a blowout than that. See, there you go. It came off it then. I think we might be seeing Belmar change the ball for that. That looked really good. Mm. Takuya Miyazawa, 189, Jason Belmonte, 227 will advance to our championship match to face Jacob Butler. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up one more time for Team Japan's Takuya Miyazawa. It's a nice ovation from the local fans here in Tokyo. He will step away in third place. It's very, everybody here is so polite and very nice and everything. I, I, I've, I've bowled in other places where when the uh, local guys lost, everybody left. <laughs> I don't think they're going to leave for this. I think yeah. that uh, a lot of people are going to be very interested in Belmo versus Butters here for the yeah. title. Uh, here he goes. And there's a strike. It's going to be interesting to watch here how Waddle this plays run, out. crank smash. He's, he's quick to the line, that's for sure. <laughs> Barnes calls him the penguin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, that's funny. It is his birthday. And uh, he's now 25 years old, which means he can rent a car without the extra fees. Please. Jacob, <laughs> rent a car. Just... just just about everything except wipe his ass. <laughs> Josh Blanchard, of course. Jo Josh has three kids at home and then a Jacob. <laughs> well, we could not ask for a, a better matchup in our championship match here. Certainly Two very, of the best players of the very season. Very compelling. It is. A lot on the line here tonight in Tokyo. It feels like there's more on the line for Jacob than there does for Belmont. I agree, yeah. If Buttruff wins tonight, he edges closer to Belmo in that player of the year race. Yeah, I also think from a mental point of view, though, um, I think that it's not good to get to a, a stage where Belmo's beating him regularly. Yeah. Well, you know what they say. You want to be the best, you got to beat the best. So, woo! Mm -hmm. Old Ric Flair. <laughs> you didn't do it, right? You didn't do the hands in the air, you know. Woo! But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Jacob wants to take that step toward ascending up the the hierarchy of bowlers. He's got to beat Belmo. And uh, he'll have an opportunity here tonight. As we watch Buttruff practice the exact same thing over and over again that he's done all weekend long. Well, and that may be the only thing that stops him from the, winning. The only thing for Jacob is... Jacob... At the Masters, I almost, I almost dropped dead in shock <laughs> when Jacob um, finished the match last, because Jacob told me that no matter what, he would never start the match. Okay, well, like, we'll see here. He will, what no, he's definitely going to finish. Yeah, he's definitely, he's definitely going to let Belmont start on the left lane. There's no doubt because he struck on the left lane a couple of times, and now he's gone ten pin, ten pin. Uh, sorry, seven pin, seven pin on this lane, but it was just amazing to see it because he was he must have absolutely hated that left line <laughs> at the Masters the extremely polite crowd here Tokyo Port Bowl is eagerly awaiting this matchup between two great bowlers I, I imagine that's an interesting dynamic there Dom talking to Jacob because Dom's obviously making suggestions to him, but, like, I don't know. It seems like, yeah, just th throw it how you do when you strike. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I'm not trying to simplify things. I don't think there's a ton of strategy that goes into what Jacob's doing. I mean, yeah, he's, I mean, I he think kinda, he's, I, I, he's struck a ton all weekend. He knows what to do. There's no, been no traffic I'm, on the left side. I'm actually quite surprised that we haven't seen him throw the other ball. Um, the other urethane ball? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he has. They're hard to tell apart. No, he's he's pretty much only been throwing the Black Hammond now. Um, 
He did drill a ball here this week. He that used was, it for one was, game. That was the Black Hammer. No, he's been using it quite a bit. No, he, he drilled a reactive ball that, oh, that he used yeah, for one game today yeah. and decided to put it away. And that was you, you that. Know was what, that. You, you know what Martin calls those for Jesper? The exhibition balls. <laughs> now, Jacob does use urethane, uh, sorry, reactive more than Jesper does, but still. Yeah. It's still a very rarity. Looks like we're about you know when ready to get started. Jacob here. first broke out. He was more of a reactive guy than he was urethane. Was he? Yeah, and the first few times I saw him, yeah, for sure. Looks like Jacob used all of his shots on the right lane. Yeah, I think he barely threw a shot on the left lane. It felt like so. Jacob is ready to start, and Belmo is not here Icing yet. Icing him. I th I think Belmo has maybe gone to the bathroom or something here, but he is uh, making Jacob. Wait, this is interesting. I know? feel like Kirk should just give Jacob another shot at this point. If he's not here ready to go, then Jacob should just be able to continue practicing. <laughs> You never know if there's gamesmanship going on. Nothing surprises me in the sport of bowling. But there's Belmo. He's back. Hey, I think he did go to the restroom. Ladies and uh, and here's Kirk. The one thing that might be awkward for Jacob here is there's the music again. <laughs> I love that music. The one thing is, though, is Jacob really doesn't like sitting down. Like, if you watch him on all the TV shows, he's always up. He always wants to, like, talk to the raps or... <laughs> Here is Belmonte. Oh, Belmonte's changed ball on both lanes. In a clash of the titans on the PBA Tour to kick things off. And he starts oh. with a perfect strike. Better than any strike he's thrown all day right there. Yeah. Good start for Belmo. Sends an early, early message to Buttruff. Takes a deep breath. Tells himself to throw a good shot. Let's see if he can make that happen. Buries it. This could be potentially be a high-scoring high scoring. match, right? I think the only way this isn't high-scoring is if one of them really gets off to a really good start and the other one just falls a little bit and then it becomes like, ugh, you know what I mean? Yeah. I can't quite keep up. But it looked like Jacob... Um, paralleled in a little bit off the gutter on that lane. I think he'll still be playing a little bit further left on this lane. Buttruff looking for a double to start. Comes up light. Haven't seen him do that too much this weekend. Leaves the bucket. Yeah. Let's see what happened here. He got it way left. It's too far left. Far down the lane. He can get it that far left easily. It's just he didn't catch it as enough. This is a, this this is kind of an odd spare for Jacob because I'm guessing he's going to hook at it, but it could be, it, the five pin could be left here pretty easily when you start hooking at this. We'll see. He is going to hook it. Does not wow. get it. Leaves the six pin open I, frame. Wow. Now Jacob didn't throw barely through a shot on that lane in practice, so I guess he felt pretty comfortable on that lane and. It looks way tighter than he thought it was going to be. And he's got to finish on that lane as well. Oh. And then, like I say, in practice, it didn't look like he had a worry in the world on that lane. Immediately, a 12-pin lead for Belmo that can swell to 22 with a strike here. No, oh, flirting with that 7-10 again. Gets the seven to go, but leaves the ten up. This really feels like Belmo is really fighting his instincts on what he's supposed to do. Um. Championship match here in Tokyo. Jason Belmonte against Jacob Buttruff. Two top players in the PBA power rankings on Flow Bowling. Buttruff number one, Belmo number two at the moment. 
This may change things. We'll find out. Maybe it won't. Belmo could win, but Jacob led all week, so he'll stay one. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Jeff sat next to me. He had a trigger finger on his mic <laughs> for a second. Here's Belmo, third frame, leads by 12. Well, uh, there's a 10 pin with a pin spinning. I don't know that this ball, I I just think that this. this it looked good this, in the first frame. Yeah, but I think he added a little surface to it. Uh, before the last match he threw it, it picked up. Since he started using it now, it just, it, it, it looks like he's got the same issue with this ball as he had with the last ball almost. It just looks like this ball isn't quite as responsive down the lane. So now it's not, it's not carrying those light hits. Whereas the other one looked ugly and was striking. This one just doesn't, I don't know. Like I say, Jason is uh, pretty accomplished at knowing what he needs to do. Yeah, and Jason's been fighting that unique carry all day long that has given and taken away from him. Jacob's got to be feeling good, though, after he had that open. Yeah, he, he didn't have Belmo stomp on his throat right there, yeah. which could have happened very easily. Instead, it's... It's an 11-pin match, Belma and, and Buttruff is still in it. I think his comfort level is about to be decided right here. Yeah. If he throws this one and it either jumps because he makes a move or it doesn't hook enough, he, he could get real uncomfortable real quick. We're going to learn a lot on this shot. Yeah. Now, maybe he can convince himself that the first shot, the problem was he just didn't catch it as much because he was expecting it to hook, and he just needs to claw on it some more. We'll see. Buries it, double, trails by one. It's such a different game that Jacob's playing than a lot of the other guys because he's using urethane, his rev rate's so high, he's on the left side. It's so hard to really visualize. You know, you can see it go too long or whatever, but it's hard to pick out whether that's him or whether that's the lane or the ball. Or It's so much harder to read his ball than it is... Um, Almost ball for me. Belmo gets the strike. Slowed down, moved a little bit further left, lofted it a little bit over the gutter to make it the ball a little bit more responsive off the spot. Oh, Belmo can get his lead back to 11 with another strike as he pops one there in the fourth. We've got six frames to go here in Tokyo. It's um, it's quite interesting. Um, when when people loft it, you can loft it to get it further down the lane, but you can also loft it to because you hit up on it a little bit. It makes it a lot more responsive when it comes off the dry, um, which is what I think Jason was aiming for on that one. Belmo, 10 pin again. Three 10 pins in this game for Jason Belmonte. All of his misses have been 10 pins. He moved further left on that lane. He didn't get it quite as far right, and the ball just it never thought about picking up. I think these next two shots are going to be very informative of how this match is going to go. I think if Jacob gets up and throws another two good shots, I think he's going to be a long. It's going to be a long, a uh, big step to him uh, winning this tournament. Buttruff, high. There we go. Leaves so to now, six ten. So now I think that the part of it that's interesting is I think they're both struggling with their ball reaction because Jacob really made that one start up and it actually did start up earlier which is one of the for me when i'm using urethane it's one of the things that really messes with my head when i think all i have to do is just hit it to make it start and my misses are when it goes too long and then you really make one start and it goes through the face then you're just like 
that's a that's a horrible feeling. Buttriff trails by 13 pins. I was just looking up Belmo, and he is had on not counting fill balls 11 shots where he hasn't struck today nine of them have been 10 pins one of them was a seven pin one was a four pin yeah and it was almost a 410 yeah it was pin. so he's been in the pocket all day yeah, long. He's, it's it's been a very nice performance for sure there's buttriff sixth frame gets the strike oh, that one was a bit fortunate that was that was very similar to the first shot he got it into out um, so to speak and uh, it was a little bit too far left too far down the lane so I think that was almost reactionary to the previous shot it's very hard to separate the two lanes when you see one jump early even though you know the other lanes tighter it's very hard not to play it as if it's gonna hook more Belmo up by 13 Strikes on the right lane will have a chance to increase the lead on the left lane. So I wonder, with Jason now, uh, how much it made a difference, Belmo trying to get straighter to where Jacob was, throwing those backup balls in practice. It wasn't a lot of shots, but it was probably 10 shots. Yeah, remind people what you saw out there. In practice. Yeah, Jason, we talked about that uh, a while ago. Jason didn't really like this pair of lanes. He said his highest score was like 180 or something on this pair of lanes. So he actually through some he actually experimented with throwing backup balls um he didn't really like the look he had he felt like he had to get too close to the gutter and with throwing across your body it's almost impossible to play straight up the lane that far to the left so he uh, he really abandoned it but maybe that's had a, even if it's only a small effect on just to the right of where jacob is so he can't just move into fresh oil now because belmo's actually bold there and now belmo's crossing the same spot this one's going to go. Gets the double. There we go. Belmo's lead swells to 23. Yeah, he gave that one the business, and he got it far enough right that it picked up. When you said earlier, Stu, that the, the move might be to give, give it more business. Yeah. As like, we said. And, and it looks like that's what he's doing now. He's really, like, just trying to catch it a little bit more. Buttriff needs a double here. Keep it close. And oh, the, that pin slid over and got slapped out. We've seen a lot of pins slide around here. And that makes it a three pin match. Yeah, so here we go. The lane that's almost been giving Jacob more trouble in the match, that it didn't give him any trouble in practice. Be interested to see if he makes an adjustment off the last shot because the first shot he went light, bucketed, then he threw it dead flush, and then the last one was the same kind of deal. It missed the spot. Oh, well, I thought that was a better shot, but it just didn't want to come up the hill. His mini string of strikes ends with a seven pin. Yeah. Four pin just went in the gutter and took a nap. Oh, here we go. Pray for him, Phoenix. No, tr no trouble right Double there. Double tapped it. Gets it. No doubter on the spare. Trails by four. So Belmo with a chance here to really take control. In the eighth and ninth frames. Well, Belmo throws a double here. I mean, he needs a spare in the tenth to win. Yeah, he'll be up by 24 pins at that point. Great shot. That is great. That's that's one of his best shots of the entire night. He's just starting to loft it a little bit more, and as to say, that just makes it the ball a little bit more responsive down the lane because you actually hit up on it as you loft it. It just makes it come around it. Mika was one of the first people I ever saw really take advantage of that. People always thought he was lofting it to get it through the fronts. And he really wasn't. A lot of the time when you throw it slower, 
if you loft it because of the way you hit up on it, it really makes the ball hook a lot. So really, it, it kind of only really works when you're throwing it slower. But if, if, you, uh, if you loft it and a little bit in the front, you can really make it come around the corner. Belmo in the driver's seat here and can really build a lead with a strike here in the ninth and take get one step his, closer to the title. Get off his bad lane as well. That's right. That's the one thing that's advantageous for Jason here is even if he does spares, the worst case scenario is he's going to be getting up in the 10th frame needing a double to win. Didn't catch that Belmo one. Belmo wants it, doesn't get it. He didn't catch that one as much. He was much softer with that then. And then on that lane, it just didn't want to play ball. That is his fourth 10 pin of the championship match. But like I say, he makes the spare. He gets up on his good lane and he needs a double. I think he can't he, be I, shut out I if think he makes he, the spare. I think he would have taken that before he started the title match. Let me rephrase that. I know. Uh-oh. Good job. It was a new Belmo spare ball. <laughs> That's right, the old Belmo spare ball would have hooked a little bit. Um, but yeah, knowing Jason, I think he almost wants Jacob to strike out so he can get up and beat him, like just like he did in uh, the World Championships. Well, max score for Belmo is 228. Max score for Jacob Buttruff is 225. And you feel like Belmo's, I mean, like Buttruff needs to strike out here, and he leaves a seven pin. He's just on that lane. He's just been forced a little bit further right. And his ball just doesn't look like he wants to carry it at all on that lane. I mean, it's amazing with the urethane balls. Like, they go from looking like they could knock over an extra row of pins to it barely looks like it's ever going to strike. You know, this game, it's, it, I, 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 don't, I, I don't really know what to, how to explain it to the viewers, but... It's just when you don't create the right angles with the urethane balls, it really you don't get a, you don't really get away with those off hits in the way you do with the reactive. Well, for Jacob, he can only max out now at two fourteen. Yep. And the messenger comes across and slaps out the seven. See, even that one didn't look like it was, it was really going to strike, and then you got the messenger of doom. Look at this bad boy. See the head Bam! Head. Yep. Came in head first and took it out. But we, we, we I don't want to be the bearer of bad news for Belmonte fans, but if Jacob, if Jacob strikes here, we've been talking about it the whole broadcast. Yes, we have. That a 7-10... Has been lingering. Has been lingering. We haven't Especially seen it. Especially on that right lane as well. There's been some really weird hits. So if Jacob can get a strike here. Messenger which he again. Can, the Messenger of Doom comes back. Tomahawks across and takes out the seven. Here's a look at the Still replay. Still alive. Watch this. Bam. Pops it. That, that was kind of a baby messenger compared to the last one. The yeah. last one was like a bam. This was more <laughs> of a bam. That was a big one, though. It yep. keeps him alive, at least. Yeah. Belmo's going to need a mark with count. Jacob, Jacob's kind of a little bit of a talker, though. I wouldn't be surprised if he, you know, tells Belmo. No messenger oh this God, time. That was really flat. <laughs> Still alive. Make him earn it, Jacob. No, not telling him this time. That's what he told him at the World Series. Make him <laughs> earn it. Belmo said, thanks, I did. Appreciate you. Needs a spare with count. Yeah. To lock up the you win. Know the best spares. A strike. Yes, sir. <laughs> Belmonte. Looking for his first victory in this building. Jason Belmonte <laughs> delivers the strike. And he wins in Japan. Thanks, Chris. Hashtag yet. Jason Belmonte's fourth win of the season. <laughs> Chris Barnes said that Jason Belmonte 
There's a reason why he hadn't won here. It's because it didn't really favor the hook guys. Belmo saw that and said, stick it in your eye, Chris Barnes. I'm going to win. He said to him, he said, Chris, your interview seems to have been cut short. You missed out the word yet. <laughs> well, yet has come today, and Jason Belmonte is your champion here at the DHC PBA Japan Invitational, and he has won five million yen. Balmo is a millionaire. <laughs> Balmo is a millionaire. He is a Japanese millionaire. $45,000 in U.S. currency for Jason Belmonte. I'm actually somewhat glad that he didn't 710 because Belmo's got a lot of followers. And if he'd a 710, I might have had a few sending me some nice messages. <laughs> 224, 213 is your final score. Jason Belmonte takes down Jacob Buttruff and continues his streak here on the PBA Tour with his fourth title of the season. And he is on the fast track to PBA Player of the Year in 2019. Yeah, I just want to take a minute just to uh, congratulate Jacob on a fantastic tournament. I mean, he led from the first frame all the way through until right here. It's, uh, it's a pretty heartbreaking way to lose the tournament when you led for all, every single game he was number one. So a good tournament for him again. Um, I guess if he keeps being the number one seed, the, uh, the percentages are on his side, and all the great bowlers of all time have got a lot of second-place finishes. There's I mean, the trophy. That man does it again. He does it. He's almost unstoppable on the PBA Tour this season.